Today's video is about the wines from Catalonia. In terms of the range of styles and grape varieties, this is one of the more diverse wine regions of the world. In this video, I'll discuss a little bit about the region. I'll discuss also the various wine styles, what you can expect to find in your wine glass. I'll also include a tasting of four wines that represent a good cross-section of what the region has to offer. In addition, I'll also include some buying options that you can use when you're out wine shopping. And as for what I'm wearing, it's been a long time since I've put this jersey on, and I don't remember it being so snug, and maybe I need to think about that. Catalonia is located in the northeast corner of Spain, with the Mediterranean as its eastern border. At the heart of the region is Barcelona, the second most populous city in Spain. This is a favorite tourist area, home of some of the greatest restaurants in the world. It produces about one quarter of all the wine made in Spain, with over 8,500 growers. The wine styles and types include a broad range of sparkling whites and reds made from varying grape varieties, some indigenous, others international. Parts of the region are distinctly Mediterranean, others much more continental. There's generally a high degree of soil diversity. Within the region, there are 12 origin denominations. I'll focus on three that I feel are particularly noteworthy, Cava, Monsant, and Priorat. Cava is the largest, at least in terms of volume. Monsant is highly underrated, a region that surrounds the third, Priorat, which is very much known for reds, but is also doing some fantastic work with white wines as well. Both a red and a white from Priorat will be featured in the upcoming tasting. The wine producer with the broadest international reach and one of the world's great wine families is Torres. Miguel Torres Jr. has been a longtime friend of mine. I visited this property a few times over the years, and it's one source from the region that covers essentially all the bases. It also has very good international distribution. In recent years, they've been instrumental in the work on reviving ancestral grape varieties like Forcata, which is currently made in just a few hundred cases per year, but with plans for expansion. At this point, let's get into the tasting. This will be a bit of a deep dive. There are four wines, one cava, one white, and two reds that are made primarily from the same grape variety, but stylistically very different from one another. Before jumping into the tasting, just a brief word on cava. About half of the wine coming out of Catalonia is dedicated to cava. Unlike champagne and unlike the various cremants within France that have very specific designated areas, Cava can actually come from a number of different places in Spain, although the majority is sourced from Catalonia. The most important point with cava is the second fermentation takes place in bottle. And this is what separates it from wines like Prosecco and any number of other wines that are made under inexpensive methods like the bulk Charmat process. Traditionally made from Macabeo, Parellada and Torello. These generally form the core for many cava blends, but other grape varieties can be used, including Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. The styles range from bone dry to quite sweet. At a base level, cava is aged nine months, not enough to show the full advantage of aging on the lees. Reserva is aged a minimum of 18 months. Here's the real value. This is cava at an elevated level. One will be included in today's tasting. There's also Gran Reserva, which is a minimum of 30 months of aging. There's also a couple of other options that are generally more difficult to find. Cava Parake, Calificado, or Corpinat, which is separate from Cava. The last few are much more pricey, generally on par with the price of champagne. As a side note, Cava offers one of the world's most unique wine bottles, Agusti Torello Mata Crypta Gran Reserva. I bought this wine at the Central Market in Barcelona some years ago. The rounded base is intended to be submerged into an ice bucket. The first wine is the Incito Brut Reserva. This is made only from traditional grape varieties with two years of bottle age. For me, typically when I drink sparkling wine, I like to use just a, a standard wine glass. I know a good number of you may like to use these flutes. Uh, you know, it's really your personal choice, but for me, there's a, a benefit in using this type of glass. Uh, there's much more aromatics, and I know sometimes people will say, well, the wine will go flat quick. Well, if you're drinking a decent glass of sparkling, I don't think it's going to be in that glass all that long. So for me, this is really the way to go for more, most sparkling wine. In terms of the appearance, uh, 
This wine has a nice, steady bead to it. The mousse is very good. And, and that's an indicator of what you find with that second fermentation in bottle. Aromatics smells uh, somewhat like uh, lemon curd, and it also has that autolytic note to it, a little bit like bread dough, a little bit like brioche, uh, a bit like almonds as well. All characteristics that you'll find with wines that do have some time aged on the lees. On the palate, the wine's very nice. It's bright, fresh, clean. There's a zestiness to it. There's a vibrancy as well. This is a very well-made cava. And this is a big step up on the base level of cava for, for only a few more dollars. So Reserva is definitely the way to go. Absolutely check this out. This is one of the better values that you'll find in sparkling wine. 2021 Scalde Priorat. When I saw this, I just had to pick it up. This is actually something that's growing in popularity in that region. And there's all sorts of different versions. You'll find some that have no oak, there are some that are oak, others with extended skin contact. So the, uh, the styles can vary. Grape varieties can also vary considerably as well. This one is made all from Garnacha Blanca. Serious wow factor on the aromatics. I mean, extremely pronounced, uh, very nuanced, very good intensity in terms of the aromatics. Uh, it has a bit of a, a peachy stone fruit character to it. If you're a fan of some of the Rhone wine, uh, white wines from the Rhone, this would also be an extremely good candidate. It has a lot of that sort of characteristic to it. On the palate, there's very good weight. I see by the back label, it shows 13.5 alcohol. Uh, the acidity on this is not very high. I'd say more mid-weight, but it has volume. There's substance and weight on the palate. I had high expectations coming in on this wine, and it absolutely surpassed that expectation. This is a fantastic bottle of wine. Uh, my recommendation is don't get this too cold. I think if it's closer to room temp or just a few degrees below, you're going to be just fine. You want to get the full range of the aromatics, and getting the wine too cold is just going to mute that. This is an absolute beauty. If you're looking for something a little bit different, definitely search this out. 2020 Palas from Montsant. The third wine from Montsant has a close relation to Priorat. It's actually an area that surrounds the region of Priorat. Generally speaking, the wines from Montsant are a little fresher, brighter, but oftentimes they're a, a similar blend. Oftentimes with Garnacha and Carina being main grape varieties, Oftentimes, some international grape varieties will also take place as well. Uh, in this case, uh, the wine is 35% from Carnacha, 35% Carina, and 15% each of Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon. So I've had a good number of wines from this area, but I've not had this specific wine. Uh, medium deep color density. This is a, a recent vintage, so... Uh, you know, it, it's going to have that youthful appearance, alcohol level of 14.5, which is quite typical from this region. Aromatics have a good deal of that, that spicy red fruit character, a bit uh, savory. Uh, this actually smells a little bit like coffee grounds. Yeah, good intensity. The fruit character is very ripe, uh, very pretty aromatics. On the palate, there's very good structure on the wine. Uh, even though the alcohol level is 14.5, there's no heat to it. It doesn't feel like it's overripe. It's not jammy. Uh, the balance with the acidity is very good, and that's what keeps everything in check. I've got to say, the wine is rather tight. Uh, you can tell it's, it's very youthful, but it's balanced well. It's put together very well. And you notice I just popped the cork on this wine. I believe with a little bit of time, this wine will bloom and the aromatics will come out and the wine will soften a bit more, but a very pretty bottle of wine. In many cases, the wines from Montsant will be quite a bit less expensive than Priorat. And in character, somewhat similar, but as I mentioned, a little brighter, a little fresher in terms of fruit character and more accessible at an earlier age. 2018 Martinet Brew from Priorat. And this fourth and final wine is one that I absolutely love. I've had their wines many times over the years. I think this is one of the top producers from Priorat. This wine is made from Garnacha, Carina, along with Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon.
in good density of color, the color extends out to the rim of the glass. And this is what's expected with the Priorat that is rather youthful. Aromatics are sensational. It's like it just grabs your nose and pulls it into the glass. There, there's an intensity there. There's a red ripe fruit character to it, spicy, savory. Uh, it has a bit of an exotic character to it. It reminds me a little bit of, of some of the uh, Asian five spice. This is really a fantastic aroma. On the palate, there's some serious heft here. I mean, this is not a wine for the timid. Back label shows an alcohol level of 14.5, but this is definitely a weighty, dense style of red. Uh, but it's all in balance. Everything really comes together very well. You can tell the raw material with the fruit is very good, and there's definitely a skilled hand in the winemaking. Uh, this is just a rock star. I'm definitely going to be drinking this a little later tonight. Absolutely beautiful bottle of wine. If you've not yet subscribed to this channel, do it right now. Hit that bell. You'll be kept up to speed on all things happening here. Hit that like button as well. These things really do matter. Any comments, post them down below. I do my very best to follow up on each and every one. If you'd like to know a little bit more about Priorot, just click the video that's up above me. And again, thanks so much for sticking around. I'll see you again before too long. Cheers.